Next question is question number 21. Look, the water blank in which we have to fill the blank with the right form of tense. First one is had flawed, which is past perfect tense. Then we have is flowing, is flowing, which is present continuous tense. Then was flowing, it is past continuous. And at last we have flew, which is past tense of verb flow. And it is simple past tense or we can also call it past indefinite tense. So here lies the hint in this word look. Here the speaker exclaims look. So we use this um, look whenever we want to draw someone's attention to the thing that we are seeing right now at the moment. So for that, the right tense will be present continuous tense. For example, look, children are playing in the park. Okay, so in such cases where we are saying look, we have to use present continuous tense. So the right answer here will be in this case is flowing. Option B. Then we have question number 22. In this question, we have to select that option which correctly shows the syllables of the given word program. Okay. So, firstly, let me tell you there are two syllables in this word. Okay. If I talk about the number, it's two. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. These two options can be clearly ruled out. In these two options, two syllables are given and the right one of them is this one. P-R-O-G-R-A-M-E. Okay, it's two syllables. These are the right syllables. So, definitely option A is the right answer and this one is incorrect. Then we have question number 23 in which we have to select that option which correctly replaces the underlined phrase in the given sentence. And the underlined phrase is disorderly and messy. Disorderly means uh, it suggests lack of order. Okay, something which is not organized. Okay, messy means not organized well. So, the pupils were behaving in a disorderly and messy manner when the teachers arrived. So, the word that can replace this phrase, disorderly and messy, among the given options is rowdy. Rowdy means uh, making a lot of noise. Okay. So, which makes sense here in this sentence because p uh, pupils we are talking about. Pupils are the students. So, definitely uh, it suggests that students were making a lot of noise. That's why this orderly, uh, you know, or messy manner is given. So, rowdy words uh, fit perfectly. A uh, rowdy word fits perfectly here. The pupils were behaving in a rowdy manner. Means they were making a lot of noise. If I talk about rude, rude means uh, when you are not acting in a friendly manner. Okay. Not friendly. Energetic means full of energy. Or you can call it vivacious. There is another word for energetic which is vivacious. Vibrant. Okay, these words suggest uh, enthusiasm, energetic, full of energy. Then we have playful. Playful means full of fun. Full of fun. Or you can say wanting to play. It's an adjective. For instance, I can say a playful puppy. It's an adjective, so it can qualify nouns like puppy. I can say a playful puppy. So, right answer obviously will be option B, which is rowdy. Then we have question number 24 and it's slightly tricky. If you don't look at this question carefully, it can be tricky for some of you. You have to select that option that forms the second pair similar in manner to the given pair. So, given pair is untrue, true. If untrue is to true, then unrest is to what? 
that we have to tell. Now, some of you can go with this option rest because it aligns, you know, with the given pair. Untrue, true and unrest, rest. But let me tell you, rest is not the right answer for this question. Why? Because if you look at this pair carefully, untrue and true, both are antonyms. But unrest and rest, though look antonyms, but are actually not antonyms. Rest is not the opposite of unrest. Why? Because unrest means... Unrest is a political situation in which people are angry. It's a political situation in which people are angry. And are ready to fight. Okay. Unrest, uh, you can say it's a very... Uh, extreme situation, you know, in which people become very angry and they are ready to fight, ready to quarrel, uh, ready to have conflicts with the other group or other uh, people, you can say. So it's a, it's such a situation, which is a quite a negative one. Opposite will be peace. Peace means there is harmony. People are uh, living together in harmony. There is uh, There are no conflicts. There are no disputes. There are no quarrels. So, unrest opposite is peace. It's not rest. Because rest is the act of relaxing. So, unrest and rest, you can see, are not the antonyms. In fact, unrest and peace are antonyms. So, right answer is definitely option A. It's not... Uh, rest. It's not comfort or it's not strength. Then we have next question which is question number 25. Select the option that correctly shows the change of the given sentence to indirect speech. Okay. We are given a sentence in direct speech. As you can see, commas and quotation marks are there. So definitely it's direct speech. And we have to find the indirect speech for the same. Manu said that and it is given in all the options. Okay, then we have to firstly change this pronoun and the change of pronoun happens according to this. Subject or the first person I can say first person changes according to the subject. I is first person so it is supposed to change according to the subject which is he. Okay, we write he for a male one. Manu is male so definitely he. In this option, I is given, so it can be eliminated. In rest of the three options, he is given. Now, we are required to change the tense. I am going, it is present continuous tense. Present continuous tense in direct speech is changed to past continuous in indirect speech. Okay, in indirect speech, it becomes past continuous. Means, am going is to be changed to was going. Was going, but first one is already eliminated. Was flying incorrect. In these two, was going is given. Okay, then he was going to Delhi. But here, to fly is written. So, it can also be eliminated and we got the right answer, option C. Still, we'll look at the complete sentence also. He was going to Delhi. Tomorrow is changed to the next day or the following day by and. Perfect. Option C is the right answer. Okay. Now we are left with the last five questions from this paper, which are very, very interesting, which are from Interactive English. Now, first one is select option correctly describing the given notice. Okay. So, suppose you found out this notice written somewhere fine for spitting what do you mean by this what do you understand by this notice does it mean you will be fine if you spit here fine means all right like everything is fine okay all right everything is all like all good no 
like it suggests that if you spit here you will be fine you will be all right if you spit here no it doesn't mean that incorrect you may spit here it's fine with us fine here means like it's okay uh, we don't uh, get bothered or we don't get annoyed by this thing if you spit here it doesn't mean that incorrect you may pay a fine and spit here. Okay, now it's allowing you. Like uh, you may, uh, you can spit here and you, you just pay the fine and you can spit here. No, it also doesn't convey that. Fine for spitting actually conveys that you will be fined. Means you will be charged. You will have to pay a certain amount of money to us if you are found spitting here. This makes Fine for spitting means if you found uh, if you are found spitting here, you will be fined. You will be charged for this thing. So definitely option C is the right answer. Then in the 32nd question, we have to fill correct option in the blank to make this conversation complete, ideal and meaningful. Okay, so let's have a look. Mohan is saying, yesterday in the college canteen, I found a fly in my soup. Okay, it's a very, uh, you can say, disgusting thing that somebody found a fly in his or her soup. So now what will Arun say? Oh, how did the soup taste? Come on, he is saying that he found a fly in the soup. You, you won't ask him that how did the soup taste? No. Didn't you ask it to fly away? Doesn't make sense. Ah, I didn't know that a fly can swim too. Where does the swimming thing uh, uh, come from here in this sentence, in this context? No, it's definitely incorrect. The right one is yuck. Yuck is an exclamation that actually shows disgust. As I told you, like it's a disgusting thing if you found a fly in your soup. So firstly, Arun will exclaim disgust. Yuck. Didn't you complain to the manager? That's the right answer. That's a justified one. That if you found a fly in your soap, didn't you complain to the manager about it? This one is correct. Option D. Then we have question number 33 in which Brian is asking, did you, found, uh, did you find your lost pen? So what will Adam say? Yes, I founded it. Let me first tell you the difference between found and founded. Okay. See, there is this one verb find, which means to search for something, to look for something, to search something, find. And the past form of this verb find is found actually. It's not founded. If I talk about found, it is present form of another verb. And the past form of found is founded. Past participle form is also founded. And this verb found, founded, founded, it means to establish something. To establish or basically to set up an organization. But the one we are talking about here is this find, which means to look for something, to search something. So if somebody is asking that, did you... Find your lost pen, you can't say, yes, I founded it. Because founded means to establish. That is a different verb. No, I did not found. Some of you may find it right. But let me tell you, it is incorrect grammatically. Because after did, you need to write first form of the verb. No, I did not find. It should be, it should not be found with did. All right. No, I did not lost it. Again, lose, lose should be there. L O S E, lose. V one. It is V two. Now, the only option we are left with, and with the, and that's the right answer is option C. No, I did not. Answer could be yes, I did, or yes, I found, or it can be no, I did not. So we are given here with the option no. The right one grammatically. So we'll go with this one. No, I did not. So option C is the right one. Then we have question number 34 in which grandma is saying it rained cats and dogs yesterday night. Raining cats and dogs means uh, it rained heavily. Raining heavily. 
when it is raining cats and dogs it means it's raining heavily so it rained heavily yesterday night so what will kiran say i don't understand how they come together when they are each other's foes foes means enemies now it's a uh, we are not uh, talking uh, about them in the literal meaning okay it's just a phrase and it has meaning raining heavily so we can't take it in literal terms that how can they come together when they are each other's enemies no that explains yesterday night's thuds thuds are uh, some uh, sound sound that produced uh, that is produced when you are hitting uh, something with something else followed by a lot of growling growling is the sound that uh, dogs make generally so not the right one great now we will have no mice in our house and also have enough product protect, uh, protection no not the right one for sure that if cats and dogs are there there will be no mice again we are not talking about the literal cats and dogs here so no school today due to water logging this is perfect water logging is when the uh, ground level rises okay and the soil submerged that is water logging so if grandma is saying it rained cats and dogs yesterday night so kiran is asking so no school today due to water logging that makes sense that is a, a you can say relevant question to the above statement then we have the final question the last question from this paper in which we have to tell we have to select that option that correctly shows where you are most likely to find the following instruction or notice wear a life jacket at all times where can you find this notice written in an aeroplane no on an interstate bus no you don't wear life jacket on a bus or an on a, uh, in an aeroplane no not even at a swimming pool we use it on a ferry ferry means ships or boats ships or boats that carry goods people or vehicles sometimes okay so ferry is that so wear a life jacket at all times you may find it uh, written on a ferry so definitely option b is the right answer all right so these were all the questions that i had to discuss with you and i hope you found them useful now i will meet you very soon in the next session with some more questions till then bye bye take care Keep learning, keep sharing.